So 3D printed prosthetics are something that have been around for a long time, and people have been working on this problem for quite a while. In fact, all the way back to 2012 when 3D printers first kind of came on the scene. The reason for this is, is that today there are about 5.6 million people in the United States with some version of limb difference, and there are about 58 million people worldwide with these sorts of problems. So prosthetics are something that are really necessary in order to help a lot of these folks out. But the problem has always been is that they're quite expensive. Now, 10 years ago, many of them would easily cost more than $50,000 to even up to $100,000. Today, it's a lot more reasonable and it can cost somewhere between three to seven grand for a hand, an arm, a foot, whatever it happens to be. But that's still not necessarily affordable. And you're running into a situation where you have kids who might be amputees who are growing. So their hand is going to change in size as they grow older. Not to mention the fact that so many prosthetics that are designed today are meant to be sort of generic, but then very often suffer from the problem of generic items and that they're not really good at any particular thing, even though they can kind of do everything. There's a need for prosthetics that are very specialized, ones that are ideal for riding a motorcycle or grabbing a beer or grabbing groceries or scratching your back, whatever it happens to be. So there is a place still here for 3D printing to do it. But why is it kind of dying? down. Well, the challenge has always been there's not enough people missing a hand or a foot to really build a very large market. This has been the challenge with low cost prosthetics. It's tough to build a business model that is viable because the market just simply doesn't exist there to make it useful. If you sell a hundred, $100 hands in a year, it's not really sustainable because the company is not even paying rent with that type of income. But 3D printing has come down in cost so greatly, and prosthetics and the need for them has continued to sustain for a period of time to where the business model can be changed up a little bit more. Again, focusing on options for kids to where as they grow, their prosthetic limb can grow with them. And if they need specific applications, you can design those specific applications. Now you have something that has compounding benefit where you can design a new foot every week. This one's for rock climbing, this one's for jogging, whatever it happens to be. There's a way to make prosthetics viable, but now we need to get into the actual engineering of these things. So let's go ahead and start with the foot. This foot is a very simple, basic design. This is a whole foot replacement that isn't even meant to go into a shoe, but it could be redesigned to fit almost anywhere. You can make it very thin and lightweight. The big critical part of this is that this foot and the hand are designed for FDM 3D printing. This means it's cost effective, but can also be print on demand. You could design 10 different sizes of this from a size six to a size 13, so that it fits all types of different people and you don't have to custom build this each time. You just create a parametric 3D model and then you can design it. This model is very, very basic. It's meant to be mildly compliant and you can change that amount of compliance down here depending on the type of recoil that a person wants in their new foot. And then we've used a standard adapter up on the top, though those adapters have to vary based on the country, based off the technology, based off the adapter that the person has for their socket. But this is a very basic idea. In the back here, we also have a little bit of catch here, which again can be made deeper so that you have more energy storage as the heel goes down. And then we put treads on the bottom, which in this case have been very exaggerated, mainly to look good on camera, but aren't necessarily great for people out there in the world. You could vary this around. You could do a fully solid TPU version. You can use PETG, all of these in order to give a person a foot that is ideal for what they're doing. And you can design 10, 20, 30 different variations of this that fit inside of shoe, that are meant to be shown off, that are more artistic, that are more function forward. One that interfaces with a motorcycle so that it fits just right. All of these can be done with this so that a person can swap out the foot they need. But the big critical component of this is really understanding materials. This is printed on its side. So you need to make sure that you have a flat surface on the bottom that it can be printed on. This way it can be uploaded to like a print on demand platform like here at Slant 3D, so that you don't have to run a factory to produce these. They can be produced and delivered in a couple of days. Now the overall cost for this part is under 40 bucks to have it 3D printed through a service like ours, which means that you could still sell this foot for two to $300 and create the value that is needed for a person to have a foot for any given day. Prosthetics, when they're this low cost to where they cost as much as clothes, can now be sold at the rates of clothes. 
to where somebody will have a closet full of feet and they can have them stored up. But again, understanding the material compliance and iterating through the different variations to make sure that you have enough bend and give everywhere you want to, this foot is probably a little bit too stiff for most folks, but still can be viable in certain applications. But now let's move on to the one that's actually really cool, which is this hand. This hand is a design that I really, really enjoy because I love single parts that have lots of different functions. This is a right hand claw. Now this claw is not meant to be cosmetically pleasing. It's not meant to look like a human hand and disguise it. This is to show off that you have a particular hand and to be function forward. This is actually designed to grab onto any sort of can or bottle that you might have. That's the baseline function of it. You have a small thumb there and the overall curvature to where you can go to a party and hold stuff that you're gonna be carrying around and that kind of thing. However, it goes further. You have these two main fingers, which do require support inside of there if designing it for POD. I would recommend doing design support, but you print it horizontally and then you have the center area to where you can run items through here so that you can twist and grab stuff if you want to and equally have it in back here so that you can do things like carry shopping bags like this. And then if we were really going far into this, we would probably talk to more amputees and say, are there something we can do with the fingertips or even the tip of this to where like maybe if you're a contractor, we would put a little socket in there to where you could just have a screw once in a while or a hook or whatever happens to be to do something functional. This hand, again, could be printed for almost less than 20 bucks very readily, which means that it can A, be disposable, it can be used in abusive environments like contracting to where if your hand broke, well, you run and grab a spare and you don't worry about it. It's very passive, it's very low cost. But again, this can be modified for particular applications. This is kind of a general use hook but you can make one that grabs onto a bicycle handle. You can grab one that grabs onto a motorcycle handle. You can have them latch down solid. You can have them break away. There's a lot of ways of doing this to create hands that are useful to people in particular applications. So that maybe cumulatively, they would spend three to $7,000 with you. Rather than buying a single hand though, they're able to get many different specific hands that are useful to them. But this is something that's never really been pursued before because it's just never really been cost effective before. And no one has put in the time to really design it that way. Quite frankly, the challenge of designing for amputees is that there's not enough of them around to really market test with them and have them in involved with it. There are a number of amputees who have created fantastic prosthetic companies. I know a guy who designed a very heavy duty metal foot to be used for motocross. He is someone who knows what is needed and what is necessary, but he's only missing a foot, so he doesn't necessarily understand the hands. But again, this opens it up. Since 3D printing is so viable, it's possible now for somebody to create a company where they have a print farm in the background that is printing orders on demand, but then is able to engage with people in order to find out what they need, what they want, what are the applications, why doesn't it fit on your socket, whatever it happens to be, all of these details that are restricted to a very niche community. And if you're outside of that community, it's tough to learn all of it but it's all addressable. Since this design could be remodified in a couple of minutes to fit to whatever socket it is or to whatever size person it is, it's now useful. So 3D printing allows the creation of entirely new type of industry that's never really existed before because prosthetics have never been so cost effective that they can basically be fashion or they can be a tool that can be swapped out. But now that is doable. Hopefully this has informed you a little bit about how to design these type of things, mainly just make sure layer lines are in plane and then use all the other principles that we use around here. But the real innovation is around the business model. Rather than selling one really expensive premium item, you can sell many lower cost items so that it's not as big of a risk. People can try out new things and you can build custom bespoke solutions for individual applications. And we'd love to see somebody build out a prosthetics company or an e-commerce store where they're just designing a hand every week and then everybody else can get a hold of those hands that are use case specific. And quite frankly, if you're an amputee who watches these videos, please comment down below with a type of hand or core problems that you've seen before with 3D printed hands and feet and we'll see if we can get them addressed because this is something that just needs done because it's now possible and people aren't doing it. So we might just have to put on a side project. Have a great day, everybody.